morning. Welcome to the webinar on uh, e-commerce in Korea, e-commerce in South Korea. Uh, given the fact that we have a few English speakers, the webinar will be uh, in English, of course, uh, so that everybody can attend. Uh, myself, I'm Lionel Orens from Flanders Investment and Trade. Uh, I'm located or based in, in Korea, and I will start with a general overview of uh, e-commerce in Korea. Uh, the presentation will then be followed by a testimonial by Hossun Jang uh, or Daniel Jang from Ontex, who's been president in Korea for quite a few years. After that, we have Marie Boos, uh, an e-marketeer, uh, to give a presentation on her, on her view in uh, on the e-commerce market. And we finish off uh, the afternoon or the morning in your case uh, by a testimonial on IP law in Korea by uh, Jung Jung Kwon, uh, a lawyer here based in, in Seoul. And after that, we have a few more minutes left uh, for a Q&A, so please feel free to, to ask any questions. During the webinar, you will be muted. If you have any specific questions, do not hesitate to put them in the chat. We will pick them up and try to bundle them and, and ask them at the end of the, of the webinar. Of course, you can also raise your hand at the Q&A and we will open the, uh, the microphone so that you can speak and ask your question. So let's get started. So thank you for joining and your interest. Um, I hope you did a little bit of preparation because um, I'm going to run fairly quickly over the market study that we presented last year. So on this slide, you can see uh, the location of our country page, the country page of Korea. And there you can find the full market study. So it's a 30, 40 page study that has all the details. For now, I will give you a small overview uh, to give you an idea and then the highlights of this market presentation. OK, there we go. Okay, we'll have to present it like this. Apologies for the delay. So this is our page with our market study. Uh, please feel free to, have, to download this and have a look. Uh, I'll go through the highlights at this moment in time. So the Korean market, it's a big market. Um, it's the size about Germany, 55, well, it's a bit less than Germany, um, 55 million inhabitants and about 38 million consumers, people that uh, have their own bank account, so to speak, and have internet access. Uh, internet penetration is quite high here with 92%. Uh, and the e commerce, about three quarters of all people have bought something online. Uh, it's 19, 19 billion of sales. And according to uh, a market study done by TV, uh, Toys Hobby and Do It Yourself are the, the single largest item uh, of purchases. That is a bit abstract, of course. Uh, so this slide gives you a bit of a breakdown uh, in terms of a survey that was done in Korea. And this survey highlighted the items that people usually buy in Korea. So clothing uh, is a key item of that, uh, body care, et cetera, that you can see here. Uh, all ages are represented, both male and female. Uh, as any other uh, Korean, uh, sorry, as any other uh, nation in the world, the last few years uh, have seen a steadily increase of uh, the sales of the online sales. Um, I have the numbers up to 2020, but that has only accelerated during the COVID years, of course. Here we have an overview, and this is quite an interesting slide. This is an overview of the e-commerce market in Korea. It's not 100% complete, but it, it, it gives you a good overview. So on the one hand, you have the general malls. These are malls that have a physical present as a presence as well as an online presence. So the Lotte Group or the e Group, which is represented here as SSG, or, or large malls that also have an online sales platform. So that's a hybrid model that's being run in Korea. The second model, and that's of course the fastest growing uh, segment, is what is called here open and social. Those are dedicated online malls. So, uh, Kupang, uh, G Market, Naver Mall, those are all huge uh, shopping malls like Amazon or Ball.com uh, that we know in Europe. And then there's a third 
range of, of shopping malls or online channels, which we call the mobile or the M-commerce. So that's mobile only. And that's quite a wide range of very specific niche, often niche uh, markets where specific shops or specific market segments are represented on an online now. So this is quite important, uh, an important slide uh, as part of your e-commerce strategy that will be mentioned later as well by some of my, uh, my fellow panelists and speakers. Specifically on how to access the, the Korean market, these are a bit, I would say, the lessons, but do please uh, read the market studies a bit more elaborate than this. Uh, one point of entry is work with an independent importer, an independent distributor, They're often relatively small, but have good market as access into conglomerates or into independent uh, distribution channels. What we do know is that often they have limited e-marketing capabilities, so e-commerce capabilities, and that is something to be to look out for and to be uh, question. Make, make sure you ask enough questions and you really figure out do your due diligence to figure out what they can do for you, what they cannot do for you. There are also very dedicated e-commerce specialists that only do e-commerce. So they basically can give you market access over many platforms. So some of these, these distributors, they don't have access to one platform, but to multiple e-commerce platforms. And that can be very interesting for, for a smaller company that will otherwise uh, struggle to, to penetrate the market. But I'm sure my colleague uh, or my uh, my fellow speaker from Omtex can elaborate a bit on that as well. A second option are the chaebols. Those are the large conglomerates that basically dominate uh, the Korean market. There's three, four, five of them. They're completely vertically integrated. So a Samsung, we all know them from the phones, but they have shopping malls, they have, uh, they build cars. They do basically anything uh, that you can imagine that the consumer needs. Um, so with these chaebols, it gives you huge market access, but you have limited control. And another problem that you may face is that they're also a, a strong competitor of your own product. There's different internal segments. So you can be um, onboarded by one of, 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 the, of the departments in such a chaebol, and the next day they will start competing with you and get another product, basically. You know? So that's a little bit tricky, so be careful with the chaebols and do your homework before entering into the institutions. And last but not least is the direct sales by an online platform. That basically means that you sell directly from Belgium through a coupon, for example, on the online platforms in Korea. Obviously, once an order is placed, you need to ship it from Belgium. So the question you need to ask is, will a Korean wait a week or two weeks to get your product? Um, there may be easier alternatives or faster alternatives uh, available so that's something to consider and the second thing to consider is that customers in korea frequently return their goods so if you're based in belgium your distribution center is there it can be quite onerous to um, to have it shipped out to korea and then send it back it's going to be quite a costly affair so it's not something that's done often but more for very specific products we do see it Some useful tips. Websites should be in Korean. That's definitely going to help you. Many Koreans do know English, but if you want to, if you're going to face competition and the competition is in Korean and they have to put in the effort, in your case, to, to go to an English website, that's going to be a disadvantage. Korean customers also look a lot at blogs and customer reviews. So that basically means that you should take care of this because if you do not pay attention, all your customers will know the bad reviews, but not you. So definitely take care of this and look at, uh, have somebody here who speaks Korean and can monitor your blogs and your customer reviews. Understanding the rules, of course, when uh, exporting to Korea. So the website by the European uh, Commission, access to markets is an important one. If you know uh, the Customs codes of your products, you can just enter them or you can use a product description as well. And you get all the details of what is required to import or export your goods to Korea. And of course, there's the Fit uh, Country page of Korea where you can find the main items as well. 
what is needed uh, and some tips and tricks and so uh, one important thing to remember and again that's on our fit country page but we see a lot of questions from that is that in order to ship uh, from europe to korea uh, and be exempt of import taxes you need to have an approved exporter status you need to be as a european country uh, as a european company and then you get these exemptions it's not very difficult it takes a little bit of time so uh, please have a, have a careful read of that information and that will help you a, a long way along especially in the negotiations with your uh, with your potential distributor or partner so that was in a very very brief nutshell uh, i've rushed to 40 pages of marketing study uh, and i think it's useful if we now see how it works in practice and what tips a company who has done it before and has been very successful in the Korean market how they look at these things so we'd like to introduce also Jan or Daniel Jan from Altex to the stage thank you Uh, hello everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Osan. I'm a key account manager of Ontex in South Korea. I'm very happy to see you uh, from uh, South Korea. So today uh, I'm going to explain the experience we had in South Korea, and it might give you some tips or helpful advice to when you get into South Korean market. So I hope you get some uh, uh, helpful um, advice from the presentation that I have. So this is a table of contents. Uh, I will briefly explain what is on text and what we are doing in South Korea and then the lesson we learn in South Korea and then keys to success. That's my opinion. Uh, anything uh, important uh, point that I will suggest to you to success in South Korean market. And when you choose a partner in South Korea, some uh, some tips that I will give you that you can take consider of it. Then uh, last but not the least, the expectation to move into South Korea. So uh, who we are? On text, uh, we are a very international uh, personal hygiene manufacturer. We produce baby care, fan care, and other care. Uh, and we have our, our own brand. My part of some of them, like a more text and Helen Upper. And but we do OEM private level, so retail brand. So uh, we produce our goods for the uh, retail chain. And we sell our product in more than 110 countries. And uh, we have a uh, uh, 20, uh, we have a lot of sales office and RD uh, center. But I will show you our uh, next slide. So this is briefly uh, mentioned in the context who we are, as I mentioned. And this is uh, context in a nutshell. So 29 sales and marketing sites over the world, and we have a nine R&D center. Uh, revenue is around 2 million uh, euro, employee around 11,000. And as far as I know, I'm the only Korean in the company, so I'm very proud of it. And we have a 19 products and facility uh, located over the world America, North America, South America, Europe, Asia Pacific. And we are focusing on three categories, which is uh, baby care and other care and fan care. So baby care is a baby diaper and pants, and uh, other care is a other diaper and pants as well. And pen care is the one that for use of the, uh, the women. And we have divided by two uh, our uh, uh, brand, which is our own brand, and other one is uh, OEM private label. We mainly focus on Western Europe and also America. So what 
we learn from South Korean market? This is would be quite interesting for you because uh, we are the one entering the market. So we had uh, entered the market Q4 2017 and with our uh, own brand, Moltex. Moltex is our own brand. And this is for baby diaper and pen. So when the time uh, we entered the market in South Korea, there's a huge issue in, in the market. Uh, people uh, people were uh, people were having a chemophobia for the product they use because uh, the the government the deep tech, uh, the carcinogen from all uh, pen care products at that time. So people were aware that the product we use every day can cause the uh, cancer so that uh, they avoid using product contain car carcinogen and try to use more eco-friendly product so moltex is made of eco-friendly ingredient which is sugar cane and corn so it's very organic and sustainable product so therefore it is not only harmless to baby but also to our nature so we take on the benefit, we took advantage of this trend. So sales has been grown up rapidly to 1 million euro in 2019, just a year after the introduction of the product in South Korea. At that time, we had only one big channel and partner, which is called Coupang. You might heard of it. Coupang is like a Amazon in South Korea. They did everything for us. So the business was very simple with them. However, uh, their uh, policy has been changed not to invest in other brands. So we, they just, they were only selling our product through their online channel. We had no marketing activity, nothing else, only they are selling through online channel. So uh, we have found the reason and solution. So if you can see the slide, we have some problem in that time, delay in new launch, no local team, change in policy in Kupan, lack of local, local overview. Uh, due to this reason, we have found the solution. We need new partner. We need marketing activity of them, of them, of them. And we need extension to retail and offline and online channel. So I would say key to success, but it really depends on what kind of business you have, what kind of item you have, what time you enter the market. So I just advise this uh, be the almost key to success. So we adapting the local reality. As I mentioned, uh, we start with Coupang. Coupang is a big company. So start with Coupang was very good. But as the strategy changed, we changed too. So uh, Starry Coupon with our brand, but they changed their strategy. We had no no one doing marketing in this uh, in this uh, South Korean market. So, but uh, thanks to uh, Flanders Investment and Trade, YFNC Yegan uh, was introduced for our uh, potential distributor of our brand product. Now they are independent playing in the market and then we are very happy for them to do that. So the sales has been increased uh, as they play in the market and they do investment in the market, making a video and do a lot of social media activity. So I recommend to uh, contact government office to get transparent and certified information and reference. Sometimes uh, you find uh, good information, you think it's good information online in South Korea, but uh, some information is not that transparent. Some of them are a uh, bit biased for the uh, marketing activity. So consider, and then consider uh, whether it is a right approach when your partner changed the strategy. Uh, please do consider uh, uh, the approach they change it, and then you have to think about is it right approach that you enter the uh, the market because you are the one to read the uh, partnership. Don't just follow what they say, and I would suggest don't find a big partner. Please find right partner to your business. So here's some uh, tips 
uh, you could find the partner in South Korea. So before I worked for Ontex, I have over uh, 10 years experience in overseas in South Korea. I work with a lot of partner distributor and retailers. So this could be my uh, really personal information, but could be very helpful for you to get into the market. So success of your business depends on which experience they have. So the uh, previous experience shows the characteristic of your partner, what kind of channel they work for and how much profit they make, what kind of goods they were dealing with. Please look into more detail of personal history in South Korea. And please be aware that some of uh, some of business should use bigger number and size. So you better check the reality in person. So visit South Korea and see the person in their office, how they work. So channel online, Coupang, 11th Street, G Market, we make price, so and so forth. Offline, e is the biggest one. You check the sales volume and profit history and the item that they are dealing with. And successful business depends on which infrastructure and culture they have. Uh, actually, office location is very important. Uh, in South Korea, we have a lot of office inform uh, office location in Seoul, uh, some of them in Busan, because uh, this depends on which area you are focusing on. If you want to focus on metropolitan area, please do have office in Seoul or Gyeonggi province. And warehouse logistics. As you might know, online um, e commerce and logistics is very important in South Korea. So you have to check how they manage the warehouse logistics. So they do have warehouse, and some of them owned by logistics by themselves. But most of them, they use third party. So please do check. And manpower, uh, which manpower, how many uh, people working for the company? And uh, please check how many people are divided in each team. So you can see many people in sales team, you know that they are more focusing on sales. If you see uh, many people in the online channel, they do focusing on online. So uh, please check these uh, online video strategy. And company culture is very important if you are um, entering the South Korean market because uh, we have. Mm, different uh, company culture uh, in a very uh, different company. So if the culture is not mingled with what you are doing and the culture you have, it's really difficult to work together and the role. So are they your partner is for uh, only distribution or they do sales and marketing all together? And successful business depends on how much they understand in local reality. Local reality is somewhat different than you expected. If you go into more detail, if you try to find a very important point in the market. So getting to know the market by only research is not very enough, as you might realize. So you have someone who lives in the market for a long time, then they should understand demography, economics, quality, customer trend, and people behave. So this report made by myself, I made that report. So is everything uh, based on the European monitor and the research that I did. So your part, I hope your partner could provide this information to you to success you to make your business success. For example, uh, on tax, we have a uh, culture in pride, best passion, reliability, integrity, and drive, and everyone. So, the last but not the least, expectation to uh, moving into South Korea. I would say uh, overall, South Korea is very competitive. You can have, uh, we have a lot of player in every segment, and but I would say it's very high potential for newcomers. 
because uh, South Korea is very advanced com a country with a lot of like uh, internet and infrastructure. So the country is connected with online everywhere. And then we are very price sensitive, but very high potential for premium and luxury goods. And positive word of mouth is very important. And online feedback is easy to access in neighbor or social media. So the customer always take advantage of it when they make a decision to buy. So if you see the slide, demographic, high density, almost half of population live in metropolitan area. Geography, we are not a big, we are a mid-style company, and we are peninsula. And marketing, mass communication, important to have positive word of mouth. And logistics, very important, fast delivery. The customer expect to see a uh, the goods are delivered within a day or two. Product competitive in on and offline and quality. We do expect high quality product unless it is very low price. So we'll have a QA later on. And thank you so much. Thank you very much, Wilson, for uh, this explanation. Um, Obviously, this was very high level. Uh, you, you talked about many things, uh, but behind the scene, there's a lot more going on. So, if uh, any of the, the listeners and, and viewers have any questions or detailed questions, I mean, do write them down and keep them for uh, for half an hour. Okay, um, Marie, uh, Marie Bus, I'm going to call you to the stage to uh, have a look and, and uh, explain to us what your business is and, and how you do it, and how you deal with things. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Marie. I am from Belgium and I came to Korea in 2015. So I've been here eight years now. Um, so before I came to Belgium, I've lived in multiple countries. I live in the UK, in China and in Italy. Um, and I've been working in marketing since I came to Korea, full time employed for a Korean company as a freelancer. And then I started my own company. We're now based in Gangnam. Um, and we focus, we have two aspects of what we do. Um, first one is um, digital marketing for Korean market. So mainly European companies that are trying to sell in South Korea. And we do website optimization for Korean companies that are trying to reach a Google using audience. So an audience that uses Google in English or any other language. Am I too small? A little bit. <laughs> I'll stand on my toes. Um, so in today's presentation, I want to go through understanding the Korean market or Korean consumers, because it's very different from how your marketing strategy would look like in Belgium or in Europe. And we'll talk about what digital marketing strategies you could use or online platforms, um, because social media here as well and search engines are different than what we use back in Europe. Um, so just a brief overview. I think Yona covered a lot of this as well. Um, and I just want to highlight that it's a very connected country. So if you look at the numbers, over 60 million um, phone connections um, with a population of only 50 million people, uh, which is a lot. Um, everyone has a phone. Many people have multiple phones and everyone is connected to the Internet. A lot of services in Korea require you to have um, like phone verification for online shopping. Um, so all you would you can say that all adults have internet connection on their phone mobile data, um, and the majority of those people are also social media users. Um, with social media, um, we don't just refer to Facebook or Instagram like we would back in Europe, um, but that also includes. Um, messaging apps like Talk, which I will refer to in slides later on. Um, and also, if you look at the bottom, you can see that the, um, the average phone usage is uh, 5 hours and 37 minutes, um, which is pretty high on a daily basis, um, counting 2 hours and 15 minutes of video, um, watching videos uh, and 1 hour of social media 
which is quite a high number. Um, I think that would mainly, um, there's a lot of time going to the office and back, so um, in public transport. And if you look around when you're on the subway during rush hours, every single person is on their phone. Um, Seoul is a very big city. Um, and I think a lot of that um, has to do with like, distance and how far people live from their, um, from how, uh, how far their home is from their work environment. Um, so this is an overview of the social media platforms. And if you can see, I'm not sure if it's big enough, but at the top it says Kakaoto, which is a South Korean social media app. And I don't think that is commonly used anywhere else in the world, apart from people who have some interest in South Korea or K-dramas or K-culture in general. And then second of all, a second one is Instagram and Facebook and then Kakao Stories. Um, so if you're coming to South Korean market, you will have to adapt your uh, social media strategy to fit the platforms that are used in this country. Um, I'll go in bigger and more detail about each of these platforms later on, but this is just an overview to show that your strategy will have to be different. Then the second slide is most uh, used uh, mobile apps. And again, in the there's two categories, apps and games. Um, it's a very big gaming industry, um, but if you look at the apps, again, Kakao Talk is on the top. Second of all is Neighbor, and Neighbor is, I would compare that with Google. It's a search engine, but it's not just a search engine. It's a search engine that comes with um, a shopping platform, blogging platform, advertisement, and so on. But I'll go into greater detail about what Neighbor is later on. And then you have Bands, which is kind of a group social media app. Um, for example, if you're a hiking club and you have a group with all your hiking club members, this is the app that you would use. And then you have Coupon, um, which was mentioned a couple of times before, which is an e-commerce platform. Um, one thing I want to highlight, and I think um, I was mentioned as well before, that Korea has a very big, um, like the spending on luxury goods in 2020 compared to other countries is almost double. You can see in Korea 300, an average of $325 um, was spent compared to what would be spent in China or in the US, which is quite interesting. So luxury goods do pretty well in this country. Um, even though in the day of today where the economy is not that stable, you still see that the importance of luxury goods or luxury items or luxury food products um, in Korea are pretty stable. All right, so that was an overview of the market and now I will go into bigger detail on what platforms that you can be using for your marketing strategy, um, which are tailored to a Korean market. So the first one is Neighbor. Um, and these are some screenshots of what a Neighbor website would look like. Um, and Neighbor, if I, compared with a platform that we know back home, it would be Google. Um, but the algorithm works quite differently and it's um, mainly focused on who pays the most for ads, gets the better position in the rankings. Um, so there's a couple of other search engines which are Dow, but their market share is much smaller than Neighbor. I think the biggest or the most important search engine used in Korea is Neighbor. I've noticed recently that more and more Koreans are starting to move away from neighbor because of the algorithm and are trying to use um, Google more and more. Um, but this is a recent development. Um, so if you're looking to break into Korea and you're looking to do digital marketing, neighbor is a platform that you will have to get used to. Unfortunately, everything is in Korean. So any neighbor account or neighbor ads account, you will have to set it up in Korean um, or you will need a Korean speaker to help you set it up. Um, foreign companies can create their own accounts. It just takes a longer time to get verified because you'll have to submit your foreign business registrations that need to be in English, um, which just which takes longer than proving, um, for example, uh, Korean business registrations. Um, normally, to get accepted, it takes around three to four weeks if there's no issues with your documents. So this is what a neighbor um, page would look like. If you search something, you can see big chunk is passed. 
which is very different from what Google looks like. Google has two or three ad spaces and neighbor, almost the whole first page is dedicated to ads. It's a very competitive and rather expensive um, platform, um, especially if you compare it to Google, um, because we do have a small market that a lot of companies are competing for. Um, if you go under ads, that's the blog section, and these are blogs made on a neighbor platform. So neighbor has their own uh, blogging platform um, and has their own like influencer industry. And then under that is neighbor shopping. So these are shops which are selling through neighbor. And then all the way at the bottom, that's the regular non-paid um, websites. So if you're looking to rank organically, you'll still end up at like all the way to the bottom of the page where um, you'll probably get very little visibility, um, which is the biggest difference with um, the Google algorithm. Um, then this slide talks about neighbor influencers. So you have on neighbor two services that can um, help you if you're looking to work with neighbor influencers or Korean influencers. That's the neighbor blog. That's just a general blog section where influencers have their own platform or neighbor cafes, which is a group um, of people who are interested in a similar topic. Um, for example, the, uh, the example I have here in the picture is a parent blogger um, and they promote um, kids products. But this specific influencer also is the, the owner of a neighbor cafe for people who are in, uh, interested in specific parent products, uh, which is quite powerful um, tool if you have access to that or if you can find the right influencer to work with. Um, it's, I would say it's pretty hard to find good influencers um, because a lot of influencers have um, huge numbers, but the conversion rate is way lower. It's not as high as you would expect. Um, so when I give advice on like what influencers should you look out for, what influencers are you trying to work with, a lot of times I would say look for niche influencers who really fit your product and have this access to a neighbor cafe with a very specific group of um, like potential clients who are interested in buying products that are related to your industry. The next uh, platform I want to introduce is Kakao Talk. Kakao Talk, um, what you can compare it to is WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a messaging platform, but in Korea, it's way more than just a mes messaging platform. Here on the slide, you see all the extra services that Kakao Talk um, offers. Um, Kakao Talk, the first one is just a messaging platform, and then you have Kakao Story, which is more of a like. You can compare it to Instagram stories where people share pictures of what they're doing. Then you have Kakao Taxi where you hire taxis um, where you can like an Uber. Um, and then you have all kinds of other stores, um, shopping platforms, for example, Kakao Hair Shop, Kakao Shop um, and so on. I think the most interesting one um, here is Kakao Store, Kakao Shop, and this is integrated with Kakao Talk messaging app. Um, and how this would work, I think I have a picture of this, yes. Um, how this would work is a lot of, um, you can, there's a, a gift option in Kakao messaging app where you can buy literally anything for whoever you're looking to buy it for, even for yourself. Um, so the, like it's a, I think it's quite a powerful e-commerce platform, especially if your product is like a, rather luxury goods, not too expensive, but still fits in the gift category. Um, other ways you could use Kakao as a marketing uh, service is by using like prompts. If you look at this slide, this is for example, a company that sells um, like musical tickets. And I think I bought musical tickets once and now every week I get a personal advertisement for more musical tickets and I do end up buying them. So it's a pretty effective strategy, I would say, if you um, have access to um, like customer data, um, these are like direct in their like direct messaging into their um, cacao chatting box. Um, one thing to know, Kakao also has an ad service, but foreign companies without a business registration in South Korea 
have to go through a very long process of being accepted into the platform and it's not always um, guaranteed that they will. So if you're looking to use, for example, cacao ads or any of these in, um, like in personal message, in first private messages, um, it's recommended to have a business registration in South Korea or work together with an agency that has a business business registration here. Um, this slide, um, I want to briefly go over the power of, um, again, influencers, but video influencers. Um, a lot of, um, I think a lot of Korean advertisements uses a lot of like um, movie stars, singers, actors, comedians to, mo to promote their products um, because people do look up to um, stars, even if it's in a niche industry um, and whatever product they brand or recommend um, basically sells. A good example is the boy band BTS, whatever they their face is on, if that's a bottle of water or yogurt, um, yogurt or cookies, it sells out in like people rush to convenience stores to buy anything related to this boy band. Um, so the power of K-pop stars or stars in general um, is incredible. It's also very expensive but it works. Um, next, I would like to talk about Coupang that has also been covered in previous presentation. So Coupang is comparable to Amazon um, and it has a huge, um, like, I think everything I buy here in Korea, I buy it off Coupang, um, like any online purchase I make um, because it, it gets delivered between like five to 24 hours, depending on the product if it's a fresh food product or electronics and this chart um, compares the power of coupon or the growth of, of coupon with other um, e-commerce platforms neighbor is on there as well um, and then you have shinsege um, 11th street and i can't read this one oh, uh, Minjok, which is a food delivery company um, so this is what the coupon app would look like on your phone um the product and uh, so you will have the product description um when it's delivered and for example you have different uh tiers uh, on on when your product will be delivered and i do know that this has a strong influence on if people will buy it or not um so if i do person like online shopping in korea i look at if it's going to be delivered within one day within a couple of hours and make my choice on that because most of the time prices are very similar for the same product and you want the one who arrives the fastest. Um, I saw a question, why would you use Coupang over Neighbor? It's a different platform. Coupang is so like mainly focused on selling physical products. Neighbor is a search engine that also has sh neighbor shops, but those are more individual retailers, smaller stores. And I think the, the biggest players, like big like groceries, um, electronics, um, all sell through neighbor. And then my last slide is the power of advertisement. Um, so as you can see, I already mentioned it before, the boy band BTS, um, whatever they um, advertise will sell. These are TV ads. Before I was talking about YouTube personal channels, but these are TV ads and the majority of the ads use stars to recommend their products or promote their products. Um, so this was a brief introduction about the social media apps and platforms that you can use when coming to the Korean market. I think it's important to highlight that you'll probably need someone who knows Korean or who can navigate these uh, platforms because it's very different from what we're used to back in Europe or back in Belgium. Um, so looking for the right partner to help you with digital marketing in Korea is vital, but also understanding how these platforms work would help you, will, uh, will get you far in like, setting up the marketing strategy and measuring the results. Thank you, that was it. Thank you, Marie, for this kind presentation and uh, give you this good overview. Um, well, then it's to our last speaker. Um, 
and Mr. Kwon and Jun Jun Kwon from uh, a law firm that specializes in IP. Uh, and obviously, it's very nice to sell your products, but you need to get them protected as well. So uh, please come to the stage. Thank you. Um, my name is Yong Jun, and I have been practicing intellectual property laws uh, since 2006, uh, mainly focusing on helping Wayne clients overseas. So then I'm very happy to be here with you from Beijing and giving some tips and advice for Korean trademarks. And uh, we have a uh, very short three topics, not a big deal, but so basic and important concepts to protect your brand in Korea. And we start with where a trademark is located among other intellectual property law um, right. Um, two in the left are all about technologies, a uh, pattern for more sophisticated inventions and iterative model uh, for relatively small inventions, so to speak which are not our main topic today. And our topic uh, for today is the trademark, um, the website um, the bottom. And maybe you all know about uh, trademark or service mark. Uh, they are some names of your business and any kind of um, identity of your business and brand. And But uh, for design, uh, it's not neither a main topic of today. Um, but uh, for example, um, the, the, the beer, uh, if you think um, you are the uh, shape of the beer or the label of the beer, it's very unique. And so you think uh, the, the, uh, the bottle or the label can attract uh, people, consumers to buy your beer. And, and you think um, the bottle or the label itself can like uh, lead someone, uh, consumers to uh, uh, buy and they can be uh, identification or identity of your business and brand. You can also think about protect the label and bottle um, both as trademark and design. So sometimes you need to think about uh, protect your bottle or label not just for design, also for um, trademarks. So I want to tell you that sometimes you need to uh, think uh, several ways um, to protect better your IP office. So, uh, why you need trademark registration in Korea? Uh, the answer is very simple, uh, to protect your brand name and your customs competence. So, um, protecting the customs competence is very important as much as you protect your brand, because uh, when people um, select your product from your brand, uh, they believe the product uh, comes from you and uh, later, if they find, found, find uh, the product not uh, coming from you or from someone else, made copycat and with some uh, bad quality, um, the consumer will not trust your brand anymore and they will not uh, buy any more your product from your brand. So you might uh, lose your market share. Uh, so that for protecting your brand and your customers, customers um, competence is very important. And for doing so, the best way, easiest way is that uh, having a trademark registration. So uh, for doing um, having uh, trademark registration in Korea. Uh, in Korea, we have a, a law, a first come, first served law, by legal term is a first file law. So if you file a trademark application later than someone else, even though you use the mark for the first time in the world, it doesn't matter. So if you be late, you cannot have a trademark registration in Korea. So you need to be hurry sometimes um, if you start with negotiating uh, with your Korean agent or you think about uh, having business in Korea, you need to be hurry and you get uh, your trademark registered as soon as possible in Korea because um, you use the mark in the world for, for the first time. It doesn't matter. The matter is that you file application as soon as possible earlier than anybody. It's the same rule in Europe. Your Belgium or Benelux, most of the countries except the United States, they are the same rule. So, 
Uh, what is so good for having um, federal registration in view of e-commerce platform business? Uh, first of all, um, if I tell you about this, uh, it is noteworthy that uh, e-commerce platform, uh, whoever it is, imagine in Korean biggest coupon or Alibaba in China, uh, they do not want to be considered as a seller. But don't be confused. Um, coupon or Alibaba, Amazon, they do not sell. They don't want to sell. If they looks like selling, but they do not sell it because um, they just they just uh, the uh, the e press e, -pl e, -pl e platform e commerce platform they just want to be um, um, brokering the consumer to seller like you because they do not want to take any responsibility over fake goods so that the best and easiest way for e commerce platform to stay away from the responsibilities or risks or fake goods. Is encouraging the seller like you to have a trademark registration and allow the seller having the trademark registration benefit and let them enjoy the advantages. So um, these are some the benefits advantages in exchange for having um, trademark registration in Korea, actually in the world, like in China, in Amazon, in the Amazon, um, the Alibaba, and also the Alibaba in China. Keyword searching they allow um, keyword searching. Of uh, your brand, which are allowed for trademark owner, and also among um, the search results, they will produce um, um, the price your product in a better place to be easy, uh, easily foundable by consumers only for trademark owner. And also the neighbor store, uh, coupon store, uh, they all mentioned uh, by the previous speakers, and they are uh, having, uh, they have the so-called uh, exclusive brand shop or brand section for your own brand if you have trademark registration where the customs, um, they are made sold out to the product under some brand name and they compare and they select uh, from the brand and they are uh, sorted by the brand name and they can select um, um, the, uh, in the, the platform. So in addition, uh, as a bonus um, for trademark registration owner, the customs office will block the fake goods from, from entering into the Korean market. Importantly, it is almost triple charge. So if you have a very, uh, the brand registration, Korea, uh, trademark registration in Korea, uh, you can enjoy um, the almost triple charge of creation of our customs office. So there's one of the reasons that you have better uh, trademark registration in Korea before you start business in Korea. And then you might have a question like, uh, you have uh, the earlier date of the business certificate, and the business certificate has your name name on it, your business name on it, so that you can, you think maybe you can compare with on a uh, registered trademark name after uh, your business certificate. But the answer is very simple. It's almost impossible, although there are some few exceptions I will tell about later. Uh, so relying on such exceptions is very risky. And so, and so I recommend you of file and trademark application when you think about business in Korea. So there are some um, actual examples showing how the Korean made e-commerce platform like Naver and Coupon, uh, all mentioned previous by uh, previous speakers. Uh, Naver Smart Store is uh, the, from the biggest Korean IT company. Uh, they have such brand uh, shown for trademark owner only. And they also uh, have very unique uh, price comparing features. They uh, show um, the prices compared with uh, other prices available uh, from another uh, major e platform uh, like Kakao uh, or the Coupang or any other um, some uh, five or six uh, major platform so that uh, the customers visiting neighbor store, uh, they uh, could believe uh, the neighbor uh, suggest best price and then they can select um, the best fit uh, to them in the next door. So such features only available for trademark owner. And as coupon, uh, they just doing just same thing as the um, neighbor store. They also brand the shop. They also allow the keyword searching for brand name only for the trademark owners. Maybe you know the, the Amazon brand registry. That is the same as what I uh, told you for neighbor and um, coupon. 
So if you, you knew uh, about the advantages, uh, if you have the brand, uh, register your brand registry in the Amazon.com, you can enjoy the same uh, benefits and advantages from the Korean e-commerce platform. So before I, um, I go to the next slide, um, although I did not add into the PPT this time, um, some bad sellers um, sometimes intentionally or mistakenly, uh, they um, report to the platform, even though you sell uh, good product, I mean, the genuine or scented goods, but they can uh, claim you violate um, their uh, trademark registration. Having uh, uh, they uh, have uh, real tra trademark right will not that matter. Once they report the platform, you violate someone else's um, IPR, they just block your goods from selling. They don't uh, check first. They check, they block first, and then they check. So it takes several weeks some time. So in the case, if you don't have any uh, trademark registration in Korea, it will be very hard to defend the claim, although the claim is wrong. So I think you better uh, have a special registration before you sell um, the, your goods in the platform, commerce platform. And here, um, I'd like to uh, tell you a very uh, unique uh, special story between two products, uh, giving us very important lesson, uh, which is that um, you have, uh, um, you might know the, uh, the movie, uh, Lord of Rings from Hollywood movie. And also you, some of you uh, might recognize him for the Baggins in the movie. And also, if you stay in Korea, but the, the yeah, as far as from Belgium, they, they don't know the, the, the puppy, the Frodo. Um, the Frodo Baggins, uh, the, the room maker, the Lord of Rings, they uh, merchandise the name of the Baggins into many goods, stationaries, many kinds of st station stationaries, and um, the um, toys. So, but they just have just uh, their trademark name names for the Baggins only for part of their goods being sold in Korea. For money, for something else, we don't know yet the reason why. But anyway, they have they do not have enough trademark registration in Korea. By the way. About uh, 2015, uh, Copy, the name Troll, uh, showed up uh, by a uh, Korean company. Um, and the, uh, the Poppy Troll uh, becomes very famous in Korea, actually much more famous for the Baggins. So the movie maker for the Baggins, they wanted to uh, impose their unregistered name of Baggins for the Baggins against the Troll, the Poppy. Or well, actually, they couldn't because they do not have enough registration for for the baggage in Korea. So, um, from the story, I can tell you that if you have to think about their beer in Korea, I think you will have a registration, uh, trademark registration for beer in Class 32. But if you um, think your business can be expanded other than beer, um, something else similar to the beer, like beer glasses, you need to also think about having uh, trademark registration for another good actor or um, the outside the beer in the same field. You think it, you can be, um, your business can be expandable to that area. And almost um, we are done. Um, uh, finally, uh, when you should register your trademark application, uh, my answer is that as it is possible. Once again, in Korea, first come, first sub rule apply. So please file the application before someone else does. Sometimes this is not good behavior, good way, but your agent or your candidate agent might be interested in having your trademark register. Uh, trademark regist under your name, under their name, if it is not registered by you. So if you already started to negotiate with your possible agent, will you start selling product in Korea already? Please just find trademark attorney and get the documents ready for filing. Lastly, unfortunately, if you are late to apply for a trademark application earlier and someone else has a registration for your mark, and then 
There are some exceptions that you can take back a registration from the Kafka cat. There is, if you mark has some level of reputation in Korea or outside of, outside of Korea, for example, in Belgium or Europe, it doesn't matter. You don't have to your mark have a reputation in Korea only. You have, if you mark have some reputation uh, like a Europe or Belgium, and it looks, you can enforce. But you need to know that it will take very long time, several years, and takes so much money. So I think you better be ready to file the application when you think um, have a business in Korea. Also, uh, you will be very used to the European trademark system. Um, the European trademark, trademark, uh, trademark will be very quick. That will be like uh, one month examination. But in Korea, these days, we need at least 14 months. So when you used to get a trademark certificate in one or two months after filing the application, it doesn't happen in Korea. So you need to be hurry, like expect two years. So be ready before you need the application or registration in Korea. Thank you. Thank you for this elaborate presentation and, and the detail that you provided. Um, that gives us, uh, well, we've reached the end of uh, the presentation so far. So that gives us a bit of room. We have a Q&A. So may I ask uh, our guests as speakers to uh, have a seat at the front and then we'll uh, move the camera a bit as well. There we go again. I hope we're back now. Yeah. Uh, can everybody hear us? I think so. Okay, there's a few questions. Uh, let me first read the last one that was posted. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Um, do you guys have the microphone? No, just a second. Uh, Amelie, can you? Okay, a few questions have been asked. Um, the first question that was asked, and maybe that's uh, a question for also from Altex. Uh, the average commission that is being charged on Kupang or Naver, is there like something like an average that, that's taken, or, or Marie, as you nodding, is there like an average that's taken as a commission on the sales turnover? So it depends on the industry, but uh, or the product, that's mainly between five to ten percent on Kupang. I think the highest is like 10.7 percent yeah. and the lowest is five but it really depends on the product and for neighbor smart, smart store I, I'm not really sure what the commission rate is on that okay thank you I think it also depends a bit on the services that uh, the online site is uh, online on like Coop, yeah Coupon yes. as well I think they sometimes provide some extra marketing so. yes. So there's a lot of factors that will define the final like commission rate, but the standard rates are somewhere between five to ten percent. Yes, uh, maybe to add on that, so indeed, Coupang sometimes uh, has well, they have their own warehouses where they stock your goods, but that's not so easy to get your goods on there. So it's, you have to be asked by Coupang to be part of their their premium uh, shopping experience, so to speak. So you often need to. Rely on your own distributor and, and his warehouse. Okay. Um, then there is another question. Now, oh, Marie has the microphone anyway. Is um, I'm going to just read it off. And then, uh, being a European or Belgian as a luxury performance. Uh, so, for Belgian and European goods, does, does this have the same premium value uh, as Japanese or as for Chinese or okay? So, I think what the question is. Um, in Korea, do European brands have, have a premium uh, label? Do, do Koreans pay extra because it is a European or a Belgian brand? Or how does that work? Yes, I think so. I think any foreign brands, especially Europe and US brands, um, 
do come with a little bit of a like um, premium, yeah, extra premium price. experience, and especially if you highlight that in your marketing strategy as well. It's all about branding and appearance. So all the big names, um, like most famous names, Chanel and Dior, um, you will see people queue outside the department store whenever they release a new product. But any like smaller company luxury items. If the marketing strategy really like, shows um, the origin of the product and like kind of displays the the quality, like how the quality is and why it is so. So important, I think it does have a competitive advantage. It needs total recognition. They need to recognize it's expensive right. and free and they pay for it. Okay. Go ahead, Sam. Also. Adding to Coupon, uh, they have uh, three different kinds of uh, the service provided to the customer. The first one is rocket delivery, which they acquire, they, uh, they purchase the goods from the seller, they store in their warehouse, they ship to the goods within uh, one day or two. And the second one is Jet. So they don't buy the product from seller, they just manage the order. And then they push the order to the seller to ship it by themselves. The last one is the normal delivery, which will take three days to five days. So the customer, they, uh, the coupon is a membership. So we pay around 5,001 Korean won. So it's around yeah, 30 it's euro, half euro, yeah. euro per month. And then it's not that big, uh, expensive. So everyone just Join it because they can enjoy rocket delivery. You purchase it, they deliver tomorrow or at least the day after uh, early morning in the two days later. So, so everybody joined the coupon membership. So they enjoy rocket delivery, jets, and normal one. So uh, it depends on the, the service they provide. The commission will be really dif uh, different. So average it. Is what she says average, but I guess the jet delivery, the seller pay more than twenty percent. Okay. I would, yeah, it's, it's very high commission, so uh, you have to think about your price strategy. So if you want to have low margin or penetrate into the market, you go with the locket delivery. But if you think you can play in the market by yourself. Just a uh, normal service with coupon, and you set up uh, your own website and working with a uh, G Market or Eleven Street, anything else. Uh, you have to think about the price strategy uh, in a uh, store. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's also a few questions come popping up for uh, our, our IP lawyer, but I'm gonna hold off a bit those in a second, so we'll answer those in a second. There's first another question for Marie, I think it is. Um, which social media channels or the preferred channels so instagram is mentioned here is that a preferred or are there others that you recommend or is it depend on the brand or, or the product i think it really depends on the brand but i but minimum if, especially if you're in luxury goods or more like instagram instagramable instagramable goods i would say instagram compared to facebook is much higher facebook is not used that much um, Instagram stories and Instagram is growing, especially now since they have video um, Instagram reels and video content that is being pushed. Um, but I would definitely also include neighbor blogs. Um, even if you're working with influencers and they run, uh, they promote your products on their platforms or you have your own neighbor blog um, because that's still one of the biggest, um, I think, review websites. Um, that people go to to check out more details about the products, more close-up pictures, um, reviews from other um, from from users in general. So neighbor blog is, is the biggest. Yes, I would say having your own neighbor blog or having your products promoted by influencers on their neighbor blogs. But having that neighbor pre presence presence is important because people will check the quality of your products. They will check the reviews. So having some presence. On your own or someone else's um, in neighbor, I think is very important. Okay, thank you. Um, that was a very clear answer. I think I would, if you wouldn't mind passing on the, the microphone to Yunju. Um, 
Okay, there's a question here. Um, if one cannot register the standard brand or their brand, I, I guess it means, would you recommend legal pursuit over, cre over creation and registration of a new brand? So basically, if the brand name has already been taken in, in Korea, is it possible to sue and, 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 and get it rejected so that you can bring your own brand? Or is it better to have a new strategy and create a new brand for the Korean market? I explain in the presentation, if you think you can't uh, register your brand because someone else already got it, uh, if, um, in the case, if you um, brand your own, own brand has some reputation in Korea already, or cyber Korea like Europe, you think your brand is very famous in Korea or in Europe, someone, some, uh, somewhere, somewhere in, the, in the world, you can uh, uh, file action be validated prior register, trademark registration and take back. But if not, it, I don't think we have the chance to win the case. Yeah, so you need a very recognized brand already yes, somewhere yes. in the world. Yes, yes. Then you can find it. It's not a really established yes, brand, yes. and it's going to be very difficult. And also the other case we can win the case is that the 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 applicant or registrant uh, who have the registration earlier than you do, um, you he or he or she was your partner or the person uh, who had some negotiation with you for business in Korea, but they just changed mind, they want to do uh, their own business by themselves. Themselves, you can prove that, you can take back. But yeah. if you don't know the agent, the applicant, uh, you haven't done any uh, business relationship with them, you don't have any chance. Okay, so if it's an, a company that filed a vote, but you don't have a connection with them, it's their first, so they're gonna keep their their, their IP registration. Another question I have, because it's something we encounter a lot, is indeed uh, a company, a Belgian company, a Flemish company, uh, finds a distributor, that distributor sets up a website for the company. So it looks like it's the company's website, but it's actually operated by the local partner. They then want to change distributor. So how can you take control back over your website that is actually not belonging to you? How do you deal with that? Uh, it, it's it's um, depending on, as I told you, that the level of reputation uh, in your brand, your own brand. So you think that your brand, your um, the website uh, by you, you the customers, I'm mean, not the, the agent, uh, they own their own website using the original Bavarian Corporation's brand name. Uh, you can let them ask, uh, ask they shut down if you have okay. registration. Yes. If, when you, only when you have a registration to you. Oh, you need a registration yeah. in Korea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. That's yeah. going to be a struggle sometimes. So if you find a new distributor and he has registration, he can claim on the, the website. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very clear. Uh, maybe it's a, a, an awkward question, but uh, I'm not sure if you want to answer that one. Is What is the average commission when you want to uh, register a brand or a trademark in Korea? What, what's the price? And how long does it take in Korea for you as a lawyer? And you give an idea on all people here. Legal fee? Yeah, the legal fee, exactly. Sorry. And, and the costs related to it. I'm not sure if there's any registration fees. From filing to registration? Yeah. yeah. Like, like $1,000 from filing to registration, including option legal fee. Yeah, so all in all, around $1,000, okay. depending on what you need. Okay, thank you. And how long does it take? Three years. Three years. Oh, okay. Yeah, it takes longer than Europe. Oh, right. like one or two months. Yeah. In Korea, like one or three, two years. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't but uh, if you pay more to the patent office, they'll be earlier. They're going to be yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay, it's like, like anywhere in the world. The more you pay, the faster it gets. Okay, thank you. That's uh, the, the, the actual way. The actual way to by the yeah. expedited like examination. Yeah, so it is something you better start early with rather than $1,000. Yeah, um, okay, that's fine. It's clear. Um, yes, there's a question in the room. Yeah, we are going to ask the question. I don't think that the, the audience has heard it. So the question that was asked in the room is, um, as of which moment are you protected? Is it from the moment that you start the filing process or when the filing is basically accepted and fully registered? Under the question that the mark application Will be registered in the, in the radar. The protection will be start 
from the date of application and the condition that the application will be registered. Yeah. So if the application is accepted, it starts from the moment of application. Okay, thank you. I don't see any new uh, questions appearing in the chat. If uh, no further questions are asked, uh, or any of the panelists want to make another comment, then uh, I think we're going to wrap up. There's one question that I should ask uh, before the last one. Also, is there a limit in time? Ah, yes, indeed. Yeah, two yeah. years in Korea. Two years. Uh, three years. Three years. Yeah. Okay. And that's from the moment from the first sale or registration. I mean, I mean, I think they asked me if the registration has not been I mean, for okay, one yes, for use. Yeah, yeah, the mark will be vulnerable to cancellation. So okay. the copycat, uh, they yeah. do not use the mark for three years. It could be canceled and you get that. Okay, so indeed. So from uh, after filing, you need to actually sell your product within a time period of three years. <laughs> three years after it. Three years, yeah. Okay, very good. Um, <laughs> well, Arne is asking a great question. Uh, if you're successful in Japan, is it a good sign for popularity in Korea? I think the answer is definitely no. Uh, maybe yes. Um, Korea and Japan are similar, but they're very different in, in, in a way as well. Um, based on my experience with dealing with, with a lot of Flemish companies, um, it, it is a good sign if you're popular in Japan, but don't take it for granted. You're still going to have to work hard. And, and Korea is a much more protected and closed market. So you're going to have to work twice as hard to have the same success in Japan. But if you succeed, then, then yeah, success can be big in Korea. Then the last question. So are you safe to sell after starting? Yes. So the last question I think was answered from the moment you start your registration, you're protected. Obviously, uh, it's conditional to your application being successful in the two years time period. Of course, it is safe, safest way to sell after you got registration. It takes two years yeah. average, and you pay more to the patent office six months. But we can tell very easily, not too difficult to when you after you file, we can tell. The okay. mark will be registered or not, so you can consult the attorney, and then you may start to sell right after you uh, have yeah. the So you can, you can sell straight after yeah. filing, making sure you got a good IP lawyer, and he can give you good indication whether or not it's going to be accepted or not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give them ten more seconds to file any questions in the chat box. Um, if not, I'm going to first uh, thank everybody uh, who joined online uh, for joining, obviously, and for asking the, and for asking all those questions. Thank you. I uh, would like also to thank the panelists. Yes, uh, you will be receiving a copy of the slides, so um, don't worry about that. We'll send it out after this. Yeah. Yes. So I would like also to thank the, the panelists here today. Um, I'm very happy for them to be here. I think you got some really hands on information. Uh, very knowledgeable people. Um, of course, we only touch the surface. Uh, the actual work is a lot more elaborate and complex. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to uh, the FIT office in Seoul, seoulartfitagency.com. You can find us on the website and we can provide you the contacts of uh, the panelists as well. So thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you in Korea soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.